up, NASA babes? It's your girl Joy back with another banger. How you doing? <laughs> How are you guys doing <laughs> on this good, good, good day? Uh huh, cuz I know you're here to slay. Slay, boo, slay, because I said so. As you guys have seen from the thumbnail, you know what this is about. Um, <clears> how <throat> I grew up in a household um, filled with drugs, crime, deception. Um, I even think some murder, drugs, all types of drugs, even the needle. <laughs> so, baby, when I see somebody nodding out, from heroin, I could do that real good. And they, they never hit the flow. Never hit and they go slow motion and the mouth droop. Right? And I think I talked about this before. I don't know. How did I survive in a house that was infested with drugs and crime? How did I survive and not succumb to what everyone else was doing and I was young young <clears throat> and that's why I tell my story to tons and tons of kids because if I can make it out and survive so can you so excuses that people give for how they are they want to blame it on their past they want to blame it on the parents or whoever was doing something that you um, didn't approve. You can't blame it on anyone else because you have to decide what you want for yourself. In every case, that, that doesn't work. But for me, I was young. I was seeing this stuff at eight, seven, eight, nine, ten. I was surrounded by all of that. Yeah, everyone in my family, not my mom, not my mom, but my brother, my sister, um, my father, my father's uh, son. So I, it was just, I was surrounded by it. And, and people think it's not, it's not real when I say that reading is what saved my life. Because I would read to escape my reality. And I was addicted to Harlequin romance books. And I always want somebody to run and climb up my fire escape. Because we lived on the fourth floor. And just whisk me away and save the day. <laughs> and so I chose and I made the choice not to do what everyone else was doing. So my family members were examples of who I did not want to become. And that was something that I made a conscious decision of from a young age. Is everyone that strong? No. I don't have an addictive personality. Um, my sister, my brother, and my father, they have addictive or they had addictive personalities. And I don't. <clears throat> so maybe it was that or maybe it was to turn off um, seeing them like that um, at their lowest moments and so on and so forth love you know loved them all my sister was like my mom but she still had her vice and um, but they show me who I did not want to become and it was something that was just instilled in me from a young age and some people have that ability at a young age and some people don't so I guess it depends on a person, but I feel as though if you want something different from your life, no one should be able to, to take you off your plan or your path. You may be derailed, you may get knocked down, but if you have that goal that you want for your life and you are deciding to do that for your life, no matter what's around you, then that's a choice that you're going to have to make and you're going to have to stick to it. And then there are some people that are just pulled back into the life and they succumb to it. And I, it was just something that never interests me. It didn't interest me at all. But I'm, I knew that 
wasn't what I wanted. And so school was an outlet for me. Uh, I like, I, it wasn't that I love going to school and a nerd, no. I like being around my friends. <clears throat> and to this day, I'm still friends with some of my high school friends and I'm still friends with one junior high school friend. Yeah, one junior high school friend, I'm still friends with her. And although I haven't seen many of them in whoo, maybe 20, 25 years or more, I still feel very close. So that if we saw each other or whatever, we would pick up like we like we never left off. Mm-hmm. Like like it was, like we were just in school. And so um, to this day, so school was an outlet for me, and dancing was an outlet for me. And instead of going towards drugs and alcohol and stuff like that, I fell into dancing. I, I did become addicted to dancing. I did. It was dancing and hanging out with my friends. Yeah. So you have to find another outlet and running. I used to run a lot. <clears throat> and running is um, therapeutic for me as well. So I need to start back running. That, that COVID really messed me up. So anyway, that's how I survived um, being a household that was plagued with something that wasn't good for me. But no one pushed it on me. But it's like when you see and it's all around you, you know, most people are just, you know, tempted by that life because that's what everyone else is doing. But I knew it's just weird from a young, young age. I knew that wasn't what I wanted. So I was the first to graduate high school in my family. I was the first to go to college. I was the first to graduate from college. So I guess the first to have a, a profession, which took me years to do out of my immediate family. Like I know one of my aunts, uh, she used to be an architect. Um, I think another teacher, my um, cousin Tina, she's a teacher, she's been an educator for ooh, forever. Um, so we have some very, very successful people in my family. But in my immediate family, my mother, father, brothers, and my sister, mm -mm. they were all sweet. And I would say the sweet people run in my family, really sweet and kind. And my cousin Leah, I think she's like an HR, head HR person. So she's super, super sweet. We have, I have sweet people, sweet natured people in my family. I will say that. So, but if it's something that you see and you know it's not right, you got to stay strong and have a goal and you work towards that goal. And that's how I survived being surrounded by um, those negative influences. You have to know what you want for you. And no matter what, you got to fight it. If that's not what you want, that's not the life you want. Or you see somebody else that's, you know, you want to you wanna do better and be better than someone else that's supposed to be a role model for you. You got to fight for that. I fought for it. I was just like, mm, y'all look stupid. Mm-mm. See somebody gnawing now, scratching stuff. I'm like, what well, is itching. It's the whole, mm-mm. Mm -mm. And then th th sometimes the hands would swell up real. Ooh, I've seen it all in my home job. I've seen it all. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. I just, I was like, that's not cute. You know, I wanted everything cute. I was like, that's not cute. I'm like, it doesn't even look cool. You look sleepy all the time. No, no. Hmm. Mm -mm, that don't even look sexy. Mm -mm. Mm -mm, mm -mm, mm -mm. And I think that's why with Clinton, I was really freaking out. 
when I thought he was doing some things and I drug tested him because I come from a family history, a family background of drugs. So it's just like, I kind of lost my <laughs> lost my mind on that one. Mm -mm. Okay, guys. So this is my third video I just did today. But I want you to stay strong and fight the temptation. If you have your own vices, um, try to get help for yourself. Try to fight the temptation. Because if there are younger people around you and they're seeing that, is that the example that you want to set for the younger people who's around you? Because it does stay with us forever. Just those visions, those visions, I'll never be able to get rid of. Whether it's alcohol, whether it's drugs, whether it's physical violence, it really does something to the children. It really does. And those visions in my head, I'll never, never forget them. And so the um, adults in my life, the older people, they were just role models of who I didn't want to become. So they were still role models, but of what I didn't want for my life. So just think about that when you have younger um, people that are around you because they are very impressionable or they may think that it's cool. You know, deep down it's not. Whether it's drinking, smoking, pills, whatever, whatever it is, just think about the young ones who are around you and the example that you're setting. And you think that it may not influence them, but it does. I think I was just, um, I was just protected. I, I feel as though I was protected from all of that. There was like, there was like an invisible force field around me that protected me. It didn't make that life tempting. From a young little girl, I just knew this is not for me. It didn't look right. Mm-mm. No. So just think about that. Think about what it's doing to your children, brothers, uncle, cousins, whatever, around you. It does affect them in some kind of way. All right. Hope I didn't offend anybody because that wasn't my intention. My intention was to share my story and how I survived. household filled with drugs mm -hmm. and that's yeah that's it stay strong keep your head up all right give this video a thumbs up or not you're gonna do whatever you want to do anyway bye y'all